Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial um, setting up a round robin or alternating sampling technique in the sampler in Ableton Live. If you're not familiar with round robin or alternating samples, um, it's a technique you can use to cycle through several samples that are all mapped to the same key. Uh, what you can do with this is create a more natural, more human type uh, sound. Obviously, if we have one sample set to one key and we strike that key repeatedly, uh, it's going to sound very robotic, uh, very computerized. Uh, by cycling through or randomizing any number of samples on that key, um, it's going to vary the timbre of each uh, sample uh, slightly. Uh, and today what we're going to do is we're going to set up four samples on one key of a snare drum. So to start, I have a blank MIDI track here. And I'm just going to uh, drag the sampler instrument onto it. Now I have a blank sampler. I'm going to open up my sample zones area here so I can drag in my samples. I'm going to go find my samples in my sample library. There they are. I have four snare drums right here, one through four. We'll shift to select all of them, drag them on over. Now the way this is set up right now, uh, each of these green bars is uh, showing that the range of each sample is going across my entire keyboard. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make these samples just uh, be triggered by the note C3, which is by default uh, middle C in Ableton. So I'm going to drag the region over here and trim this up so that I'm only going to hear these notes on C3. Now the reason, the, the way I was able to uh, drag them all at the same time is because by default when you drag multiple samples in, they're all selected at the same time. If you want to get back to that, click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one, you can edit all, all of your samples at the same time. Um, now what if I wanted my samples to be up here, say on F3? I can do that. Uh, the only thing we have to worry about is that the root here, the little R, is still on C3. So what's going to happen is these are going to fall out of tune. They're not going to sound right. So in addition to uh, setting the key range, you also had to set the root pitch. In order to do that, uh, you just hold down Option on a Mac and click on the where you want the uh, where you want them to go. Uh, you can also click and hold and drag them, and you can drag it where you want it to go. So I'm going to stay on C3 for today. The next thing we need to do is set up a uh, sample select range. And we can do that uh, with the sample select editor, which is the SEL button up here. So I click that, and I get four more bars. But now, the uh, if I go into small view here, you'll see that the values are somewhere between 0 and 127. Um, that's no coincidence, uh, considering that all MIDI data bytes uh, transmit information between 0 and 127. Uh, what we have to do is we have to set a range between 0 and 127 uh, for each of our samples. And we're going to equally uh, break them up so that we can go back and modulate the sample selection with an LFO. And the LFO, wherever the LFO may be in its cycle, uh, will be somewhere between 0 and 127. So if I had a sample on 24, that would be the one that would be played at that particular time. So I'm going to... Um, make each of the, one of these right around 31 or 32. If you divide 128 by uh, 4, you're going to get right around uh, 31, 32-ish. Um, so I'm going to pull these up here. There we go. And so I have them spaced up uh, equally across the uh, my spectrum there. Now, now that we've set this this way, we still have to um, set our uh, modulation. Um, we have to set an LFO to actually select from this range to kind of oscillate through this range so that we can uh, create a more random type effect. Um, you can only do this with LFO 2 and 3 because LFO 1 only lets you choose four parameters, volume, pan, filter, and pitch. LFO 2 and 3 allow you to pick any parameter. You can actually uh, do two parameters at the same time. So in this case, our parameter that we are 
uh, modulating, like I said before, is the sample selection. So you have the sample selector. Um, we also have to pull the amount all the way up, up to 100, so that it fully affects uh, that range up there. Uh, additionally, we have to turn the retrigger off. If retrigger is on, every time we hit the key, it will restart the LFO. That we don't want that. Uh, it won't alternate. Then we want it to essentially. We want the LFO to run free. Essentially, now we could keep it like this. We have a sine wave shape, uh, cycling at one one time per second, one hertz. Um, but to make this more randomized, I'm going to choose the step and hold waveform, which is essentially random. And I'm going to pull the frequency, uh, the essentially the rate up to 30 hertz. So this will cycle through uh, 30 times per second. Um, again, just creating a, more of a chance that we will um, have two different samples back to back. Uh, unfortunately, there's no real way to just trigger one after the other, after the other, after the other. It's uh, just not possible in the sampler. But uh, this is about as close as we can get um, it's about with a, essentially creating a random sample generator here. Now, the only other thing that we're going to want to do is go into our filter and global tab here. Uh, because we're dealing with percussion, uh, if I just uh, tap the key quickly, you're only going to hear a little bit of the sample. What we want to do is create a one shot out of the sample. And a one shot is a sample that's played from start to end, regardless of how hard or how long you hold the key down. Unfortunately, there's no just one shot button to turn on. We have to just pull the release out on our ADSR here uh, so that it plays the full sample. And now you'll hear that it plays the full sample. Now, we've set up our modulation. So if I play a series of uh, uh, multiple notes, I should hear uh, some varying timbres between the, the, uh, various, um, the various samples. And again, it's a very subtle difference, but it can add just an element of humanism, um, an element of uh, uh, you know, not so robotic feeling, a more natural feeling uh, to your uh, drum recordings. One last thing I may want to do while I'm here, while I'm on this topic, uh, if I click on my sample up here and go down to the sample tab, um, to get rid of all this extra space in the sample, you can pull the uh, end point of the sample up and crop it. You can just right click and you do crop sample. Uh, additionally, you can uh, hit the uh, snap button down here which automatically snaps the endpoint wherever I set it to a zero crossing so I don't get any weird clicks or pops in the sample. Uh, one problem is that if you have mold lots of samples with a lot of extra noise on the end of it, that noise can compound on top of each other and kind of create extra uh, little noise and little uh, extra sounds in the background that we don't want. So I would go through each sample and crop each one to just create a more um, uh, clean but still natural sounding sample. Uh, thanks for viewing. If you have any comments or questions for me, leave them down in the comments area below. Um, I plan on doing several more videos covering Logic, Ableton, Melodyne, Pro Tools, uh, maybe a little Recycle as well. Um, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, leave them in the bottom. Thanks.